Okay, I honestly don't know where to begin with this video. I've been sat here now for like the past 15 minutes trying to think of a structure and the only thing I can think of is just wing it. I'm just going to try and do my best to get this video out and try and keep all the knowledge that's currently trying to keep in my brain from what I've just absorbed from the coffee stain video, which I'll link in the description. I've literally just got off a live stream, a seven and a half hour live stream that was on Twitch and YouTube. We peaked at 780 odd people on Twitch and then 280 odd people on YouTube. That is a lot of support. I know the hype is real for 1.0 and I cannot thank you guys enough for the love and the support that you have given me over these five years with this shit game. <laughs> so again, thank you for the love and the support. And it's only, as of right now, 11 days away until the release. So the first thing they actually show us is the Mark VI belt. It's officially confirmed and it does transport 1,200 items per minute. And that is accompanied with a Mark VI lift. Because as you know, over the many years that we've had Mark III miners and you overclock them, we get an output of 1,200. And we've never been able to capitalize on that like yield from the miner to our factories. We've always had to use the maximum of a Mark V belt. But there has been speculation over this past year to two years if we are going to get a, a an upgraded Mark III miner with potentially two outputs and use two 780 belts, maybe. But yeah, that was that. Next up, they talked about the new building that we've been seeing, which is like that pulsing transformer looking one. And that is officially called the converter. And this is a very special machine because... Oh boy, is this machine officially a game changer for everything in regards to ore. Because if we look at this image right here, we can actually see the recipes. And inside the recipes, it just looks normal. You can see iron, copper, limestone, coal, more coal, sulfur, bacterium, and so on. So what this building does, it takes in raw ore, mixes it with the Sam juice, that is the packaged one, and then it outputs another item. So it converts one ore to another, basically, hence converter. So let's say, for example, I'm a lover of sulfur, and I've always wished for there to be more sulfur in the game. Well, now we can, because if we look at this recipe right here, we can see sulfur bracket iron. So what this means is if we was to mix iron with this recipe, with the Sam juice, which is this down here, we will then make sulfur. We don't know the output. It might be, you know, a large amount. It might be a, uh, we might need a large amount of items. We can kind of see down here, um, 24 um, limestone mixed with Sam juice is going to output iron ore, but we don't know what that yield is going to be on the iron ore output. Um, but this is a cool feature because what this could allow us to do is kind of, link up some of these buildings kind of like what we do currently with recycled plastic and recycled rubber where if we put down recycled rubber we can then put that and recycle that into plastic we can get that plastic chain it up to make more rubber that rubber to make more plastic and so on and so forth to make increased yield from them resources all you need to do is just add the fuel this is going to be very similar the only thing we've got to do is add the uh, the sam juice which is packaged and it, we can even see that we can make more uranium we just got to mix it with bauxite so if we want to make more bauxite we could scrap some copper which we know we've got an abundance of around the map compared to bauxite and uranium we can then get more copper from just normal nodes turn it into bauxite that bauxite could then turn into more uranium where then we can make more power more uranium nuclear waste which means more plutonium and more other things we'll see later on in the video so it's a cool ass machine and this could dramatically change how people's factories work especially late game and then as you know we've been looking at and speculating of what this new ingot is that we've been seeing coming out of what we now know as the converter which we thought it was gold we thought it was like another variant of caterium or bronze there's been so many speculations what it is and the official name for it is fixite ingots so that's what it is, is kind of a unique name for a fix-it company. And the way this one works, it takes in ingots with the Sam juice, so it doesn't take in ore like what the other recipes do. So let's say it can take in iron, caterium, and aluminium. They all go into the converter, and they all give off different yields because aluminium, caterium, and iron all have different 
rarity properties because aluminium is obviously more rarer than what iron is so it makes sense that the aluminium will get more yield and then the fixite uh, ingots then go into the constructor as we know which make these triangle toblerons which officially have a name called tri uh, fix fixite trigons uh, and that's the name but i'm still going to call them toblerons and hopefully you guys do as well because there's no way i'm running around going oh i need fixite trigons um i'm going to be calling them toblerons it's more fun and it's just me so and then even more items that can be made in the converter i'm sorry there's so much information within this video i'm trying to be clear as possible but there's a new item it, uh, it makes called a time crystal and that is that little cube transistor thing that we see uh, in the teaser where i actually could not find but then one of you guys pointed it out and then i also noticed it straight after i uploaded the video and i felt like a right spoon and that time crystal actually only needs wait for it diamond which <laughs> i apologize if you don't get my sense of humor but it was so obvious that it was diamond and not lube or jelly where some of these were getting so mad why you think i would think it was lube but i apologize if you don't get my humor but now that we know it's diamond we know that comes from the particle accelerator from coal but here is the kicker because to make 30 of uh 30 diamond it consumes 600 coal so yeah 600 coal makes 30 diamond and now we can see why there's a lot more coal nodes added to the map and then it also is going to make us use the converter to make coal from our already established ores that we might not be using and then convert that with the sam juice to make coal and then drum roll please the new machine that we've not talked about yet is officially confirmed as the quantum encoder round of applause we got this right <laughs> um which was uh it's a nice surprise to be honest um but to be honest like with the recipes that we did and the recipes we brought down we got everything right we we speculated right and it, it does feel good that we've we we did our research we did our look into everything and uh it, it's uh yeah we got it all right so it is the quantum computer Quant quantum encoder sorry and then that has three solid inputs and um one liquid input and it also has one liquid output but this machine is a very advanced machine that does very very high end uh items that we're going to need for future things this is kind of like the gateway to the big stuff so uh, the quantum encoder does fluctuate with so much power compared to what the particle accelerator does and all that kind of stuff and then also in this shot right here you can see that it's taken in the quantum computer it's also taken in the trigons slash toblerons it's taken in the time crystals and it's taken in this blue juice which i'm still calling blue juice right now we have pink juice sorry sam juice blue juice and we've also got that other pink juice which we will get to because they do officially have names, but I'm still going to call them blue and pink juice, even though technically they're not a liquid, gas, or plasma. But back to this image at hand, we can see the quantum encoder, and we now officially have confirmation that this is no longer the quantum computer. It's now the supercomputer. So eagle-eyed viewer may have noticed in the teaser video that we did see the quantum uh, computer. It is there in the teaser video. You can see it coming out of the uh, manufacturer. But what people have spotted is the fact that the recipe for quantum computers is the same as supercomputers. Hmm, isn't that strange? Um, yes, it is. So as we know in the recipe breakdown, we kind of noticed that we saw a manufacturer as the same in this image, taking plastic high-speed connectors, AI limiters, and computers. And that was the original recipe for supercomputers. But they've reskinned the supercomputer. Because as you can see, I'll put a little image up on screen right now. I did have a little theory on, um, on Twitter. Uh, and you can see that the supercomputer has officially now received a new skin, which is the quantum computer that we've had for many years in the Fixmas calendar to unlock the hard drives. So now the quantum encoder is officially this supercomputer and the quantum computer is no longer a thing. So because quantum computers are no more, they've actually made this one, which I thought was 
the new quantum computer and the old con quantum computer was the now the supercomputer, which we already know it is. But this, I thought it was not. But its real name is the Neural Quantum Processor. And just to clarify, like Snot says in the video also, it's not replacing quantum computers. It's a new part entirely. So it's just Neural Quantum Processor is a new entire thing. There's so many large words. My brain is just getting smaller and smaller and smaller. And my brain is then going to go... It, there's just so much big words going on so again apologize there's much information in this video and i'm trying to digest it all myself at the same time and to make this item it requires one of the liquids slash gas slash plasma that we've been kind of speculating on where on where it comes from and that is called the excited photonic matter which is the blue one or epm for short or in my case blue juice and that comes from the converter. So, as we noticed in the recipe breakdown, we noticed there was no input going into the converter to actually make this blue juice, the electronic photon uh, matter, I think it was called. Too many big words again. And this actually comes from the atmosphere. So this is the first of its kind, which is a machine you put down that doesn't have to go onto a node which produces a item or, or a liquid or a solid or a gas but technically it's not any of them because we got confirmation that it's not a liquid it's not a gas it's not a plasma it's something different and i don't even want to go down the void of that so anyway that blue juice comes out the converter and it goes into the quantum encoder alongside other items to make this processor and with this processor, it outputs a byproduct of dark matter residue. I, I quote me if I'm wrong, but I think that's what it's called. Dark matter residue, which is the Pepto-Bismol, which I've, what I've been calling pink juice. And then after that, we also got a new item, which is from the particle accelerator, which is called the dark quantum crystal, which I do believe is what we've been calling the quantum crystal. And... So dark matter crystal, we got one of the names right, one of the words right. And this actually is made from the particle accelerator and it goes into the quantum encoder with some other items to make the quantum crystal oscillator, the, 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 the one we've had for months, the crystal oscillator. Sorry, sorry, the superposition oscillator. I just had to double check because it didn't sound right, the quantum oscillator. Or whatever I said. So, so, more information coming your way. Again, I apologies. There's so much information. So, with the dark matter pink liquid, Peptobismol, it is something you cannot package and it's something you cannot sink. It's something you have to recycle. So, the best way to kind of do this is to get the byproduct of a um, quantum processor, well, the processor, the output of the uh, the byproduct of the pink juice comes around and goes into a particle accelerator with diamond to make the dark matter crystals. But from this image here, it looks like, as you can tell, we have the quantum encoder at the back, which is making the superposition oscillator. It's also sending a byproduct of the pink juice. The pink juice is coming around the back and it's combining with pink juice that's coming out of the converter, which is being fed by the Sam juice, which is in the canisters. So that Sam juice is going into here to make the matter juice, the pink juice, the Pepto-Bismol juice, whichever we want to call it. That then comes into this particle accelerator with diamond to make the quantum crisp dark matter crystals. Um, sorry, the dark matter crystals. There's no quantum in there. Uh, and they go back around and it's kind of like a whole kind of loop. So you can see how potentially complicated this could get, especially in large scale or just further down the line we go. Because it, it's... It's... <laughs> and then inside the quantum encoder, we found out we can make synthetic power shard which means we don't have to keep running around to slugs to go and get what, they, uh, what we need from them that is only kind of for anything up to maybe you could say phase seven or eight um and by that time you're probably going to have a few anyway but once you get it unlocked we then get the synthetic power shards which technically we can get unlimited of because nothing's depletable in this game so and the synthetic power shards require dark matter crystal quartz 
and time crystals. Whew. And then again, the synthetic crystals, when they are made, also output a byproduct of the pink juice. Again, I'm not going to be using the names that they are. They're too long. You could just call them R, whatever the names was, RMD or RDM or pink juice, blue juice, Sam juice. That's all we need to know. Oh, and Toblerons. <laughs> Can't forget about that one. And then here is the finale. The quantum encoder can now produce a new power source. Yes, a new power source. I never thought that would be coming. And this is called Fixsonium. Again, fix as in fix it. And what this is, is an Ikea lamp. And that Ikea lamp <laughs> is a new power source, as we kind of expected. And as not said in the video with a very bad, very, very bad pun or dad joke, it lightens up the room. Mm -hmm. Let that sink in. <laughs> Ikea reference, if you didn't get it. And then we got the confirmation about a new item as well called Singularity Cells, which is the item that's making from nuclear pasta, dark matter crystals, uh, concrete and iron plates, which is kind of what we see at the end of the video, which makes um, the Singularity Cells, which is basically the Death Star. And then you get... As we know, we get the pink juice, we mix it with the singularity cells, then the singularity cells mix with, yes, plutonium waste, which means we can finally recycle plutonium waste. So nucle nuclear uh, waste is now recyclable into plutonium. Plutonium is now able to go into singular, not singularity cells, fixonium. I think that's the word. And the fixonium makes the IKEA lamp. And then that fixonium, you combine it with the blue juice with the Toblerone and then with the electromagnetic rods to then make a new fuel source called Fixonium Fuel Rods, I think, which is this item right here. And oh boy, what this does, it goes into your nuclear power plant, but it doesn't make waste. <sighs> no more waste and oh boy i'm not gonna lie hopefully hopefully i made that as clear as possible because oh boy my brain go poof i've done a seven and a half hour live stream and then i've just come and done this and things are going bouncing around my brain so hopefully that makes sense if it doesn't i apologize go and double check with the coffee stain video if you've not seen that <sighs> but i'm excited but then we got something else. A little secret teaser thing like they always do. And this one annoyed me a lot. So I'm just going to play the clip just so you can see what happened. One more thing I want to talk about in this video before I leave off, uh, and it has to do with blueprints. So I'd like to take a moment to talk about a little change we made and how blueprints work in Satisfactory. So in, oh geez, what the shit? Why is this so loud? Holy shit, what's going on? Hey, what the shit is going on out here? <gasps> Holy shit, lasers? <sighs> yep, lasers. He's been going on about this, but the worst thing is, and something Coffee Saint have never done in the past, is to do a To Be Continued. So expect next Friday to be a super spicy video as well. But take into consideration, he just talked about a blueprint change. Don't mix that up with the summer sleep. He was about to tell us about blueprints, which is something we've all been wanting about changes and possibly different sizes. And then only to find out he got interrupted by the crashing and loud bangs of the lasers outside with whatever that machine is. And I still don't understand what the summer sleeps are going to be doing, but hopefully we find out next Friday. So guys, much love. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. It might be a bit too wordy. Hopefully I made it as understandable as you can. And if I please let me know how I did. It was a lot of information. It's been a long day and I appreciate you all. So thank you so much for the love. 
And as always, we are getting closer to 1.0. So again, like, subscribe, and also leave a comment. Without further ado, keep smiling. And I'll see you in another video. <laughs> There's so much. Oh my God.